So I just can't motivate <laughs> to do anything uh, over the holiday because I got the dog. Of course, my ex-wife will be taking him back here. I, I guess, well, I was expecting a call from her today, but she hadn't taken him back. So anyway, I thought I'd get into uh, the 2023 uh, news uh, because now uh, we've got a lot, a whole new news stream. Uh, you know me, I'm just a, a, a news hound. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, let's get into um, this video here. So the things that we have to celebrate uh, in uh, 2023 is the mass murderer, uh, Dr. Fauci, uh, is, is finally... Uh, going to be uh, relieving, relieved of his position in the government. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping he'll face justice. I kind of doubt it. Uh, he'll probably just go on to get a job at a pharmaceutical company <laughs> and, make, and make another billion dollars. But anyway, so this was the exchange between him and Ron Paul, uh, just so you can listen to it for just a second. I hate to start with this story because there's some other ones that I'm going to get into, especially the Ukrainian numbers uh, as being reported by Russian television. But here you go getting into something if the point that you are making is that the the, the grant that was funded as a sub award from EcoHealth to Wuhan created SARS-CoV-2 that's where you are getting let me finish we don't know well wait, wait a minute it didn't I come can, from the lab but all the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab you and there will be responsibility for those who funded the lab including yourself I totally this committee resent, will allow the witness to respond. I totally resent the lie that you are now propagating, Senator, because if you look at the viruses that were used in the experiments that were given in the annual reports that were published in the literature, it is molecularly impossible. No one's saying those it, viruses it is, caused it. It no is molecularly. Those virus caused the pandemic. What we're alleging is that gain of function research was going on in that lab and NIH funded it. That you is can't not. Get away from it. It meets your definition and you are obfuscating the truth. I'm not obfuscating the truth. Senator You're Paul, the one. Time is expired, but I will allow the witness to. Let me just finish. I want everyone to understand that if you look at those viruses, and that's judged by qualified virologists and evolutionary biologists. Those viruses are molecularly impossible no one's to result they are. No in SARS cov No one's saying they are. the pandemic. We're saying they are, the the are gain-of-function viruses because they were animal yeah. viruses that became more transmissible in human, and you funded it. And you admit the truth. So... All right, so uh, we're getting the latest uh, Twitter dump. Um, Elon Musk, <laughs> I love him or hate him, uh, it sounds like he's going to prove uh, definitively that, uh, that uh, I guess you could say Fauci is probably the greatest mass murderer uh, in human history. Um, and, of course, my ex-wife thinks he's uh, the uh, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I think he's the Antichrist myself. But that's just my opinion. You know, you, you can have your opinion. Uh I, I'm just glad to see him uh, gone. Uh, of course, the people that are taking his place are just as bad. They're still promoting the uh, the uh, jab. And, uh, and I hope you're just kind of following along. I can't talk about these things on YouTube. But, uh, uh, well, John Campbell, uh, he's been kind of doing the fringe videos about uh, a lot of evidence coming out of Australia and uh, other countries uh, where they're doing studies on the jab. Um, you might want to just take a look at those. Uh, very interesting. Uh Seems a lot of people, um, well, might have had uh, issues with the jab. So let's get into the other news. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, I'll just keep the dog here. All right. So uh, the second one was, you know, a, a tragedy to the world. Uh, Barbara Walters is dead today. Um, if you recall, uh, back in, I think it was 97, she started The View. Imagine The View. <laughs> Who watches The View anymore? Uh, but actually, you know, when she first started it, it was a good show. And... Um, and uh, she would get on there and she would debate both sides of the equation. And uh, it was a healthy debate. Uh, then it turned into, of course, when Whoopi Goldberg and a couple of the other people got on there, it turned into this shrill, uh, you know, leftist uh, platform where they just don't tolerate anybody's uh, dissension from their uh, world narrative. And, uh, and so that's why that's where the view is today. I, I can't believe people actually watch it. I mean, you know, anymore. It's kind of like Saturday Night Live. I mean, Saturday Night Live, God knows, man. Remember, it used to be funny as hell. 
Oh my God, I remember back in college in the 80s, I would watch it every single Saturday night. I mean, that was a big thing that we looked forward to. And, and now I, I wouldn't watch it at all. I, hell, I haven't watched it in years. I mean, it's what's the point? Uh, it's, not, it's not even funny anymore. So uh, we started with Fachi. We got into Barbara Walters. Um, oh, here's, a, here's another story for you. Uh, Nancy Pelosi. Um, Elon Musk, once again, he's dropping a bunch of stuff that shows that Nancy Pelosi, well, I don't know if it was Elon Musk, but the, the news is coming out. Might, I know it was from the Republicans, I think, that uh, she intentionally opened up the uh, uh, congressional house. I mean, you know that Trump offered uh, a thousand uh, troops to secure things on January 6th. Uh, it turns out, you know, well, we knew that she turned it down, but we did not know the extent to which she pulled back the uh, Capitol Police. I told you, no way you get in the Capitol building <laughs> unless it was a setup. I mean, you know, you knew that those doors are, are electronically locked. You know, I mean, that, that, so so what she, and so now the text messages are starting to come out about how she was telling the Capitol Police if something happens, which we, we now know that the FBI was embedded with the January 6th crowd stoking them on. Where's Ray Epps? Where's Ray Epps, right? And so uh, I think we're pretty much uh, 100% that it was a setup. Um, now, I'm going to put the dog down because I got to get into some depressing news here. Uh, this, is, this is the worst of this video. If you want to turn it off, I just want to give... This is according to Russian television, okay? I got to attribute it to them, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, so these are the latest numbers as of the 2nd of January, 2023. So the Russians are saying right now uh, they have destroyed 355 Ukrainian airplanes or NATO airplanes, you might say, uh, 199 helicopters, 2,794 unmanned aerial vehicles, 399 air defense missile systems, uh, which I did hear today that there was another HIMARS that just got taken out. That's uh, millions and millions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money. Glad that we're uh, just pissing it away for the Russians to destroy in Ukraine. Um, although I did see some news that, that some of those HIMARS systems might have uh, hit some Russian barracks, uh, killing like 70 Russian soldiers or something. So uh, if, you, if you're on the Ukrainian side of the war, yay! Okay. Uh, 7,366 tanks and other armored vehicles have been destroyed by Russia. 957 multiple rocket launchers. Uh, boy, that's in, these numbers are staggering. But I mean, you know, like I said, Russian television. Do you want to believe them or not? I don't see. I don't see why they want to lie. But maybe so. 3,763 filled artillery cannons, uh, seven, and 7,876 special military motor vehicles. So when you look at all of those numbers. Uh, you know, and of course, if you listen to uh, uh, Colonel McGregor, uh, he's all over YouTube and Rumble and, uh, well, probably other channels. Maybe he's on Rockfin. Or I'm, not, I'm not on those channels or anything. Um, the numbers are staggering. I don't see uh, how Ukraine's going to continue. I mean, Russia, as we know, is just waiting for the ground to freeze and then uh, they'll be coming across with their offensive. Although, I mean, when you look at these numbers, I mean, the offensive is, is it's been going on for quite some time. It's just they didn't have the numbers. You know, their reservists have been called up. They're, they're getting trained. You know, let me, let me tell you how the military works because I was in the National Guard. So when we were going to get sent to Iraq, you know, you get called up, you know, you have to, well, in the, in the Army anyway, not necessarily in the Air Force, but you, you have to go through special training. Like was I, when I was going to go to Honduras to fight the Nicaragua uh, in Nicaragua, um, we had to go through uh, uh, combat training at Fort Bragg. And uh, we did that for about a month. Uh, uh, fortunately, I don't know what happened. Somehow the orders changed and I didn't end up in Honduras. And so that was good for me. But, but yeah, we, we went through a month of training. Uh, you know, it was, and that was a weird, weird feeling. You know, here you are just a college student and all of a sudden you're on a plane going to Fort Bragg to, to train to go to Honduras and fight. But anyway, that's it. Uh, that's it for this video. You peace out, stay free. Good, 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 good to live in the uh, free state of Florida. Oh, hey, that was another video that I saw. I just wanted to throw this out because, I, you know, I just fish around. I watch these videos and something pops up that gets my interest. And the guy was pointing out that people are leaving Florida, uh, not necessarily in droves, but they're coming here and they're realizing that 
the life here is not the life that they thought they were getting. Uh, and, and I can see his point. Our insurance rates have gone up quite a bit uh, because of the hurricane and, and other things. Uh, the housing prices have gone sky high because of so many people moving here with money. The rental prices in Miami are sky high, up 35% or so. Uh, so you can see the price of living here in Florida is not what it used to be. Uh, traffic is another uh, big concern, especially you know around Tampa Bay or um, Jacksonville, Florida. Especially, I bet I bet in Miami it's pretty brutal right now because there's so many people moving in, so many businesses moving to the area. So Florida is not the same as it used to be, and a lot of these people they can't take the heat. Now I, I'm just very lucky in the fact that the heat doesn't bother me, and I mean in the summertime it is literally. I mean you walk out the door and you're sweating, but you know, the thing is with Florida, it's it's kind of like with life. You know, if you're in an extremely cold environment or you're in an extremely hot environment, you just got to get out in it and just bear with it. And you'll be surprised at how you adapt. So in the summertime, because I go for hikes and I'll be out in the heat for four or five hours. And that's another thing, you know, they were talking about the amount of um, skin cancer because people don't protect their skin. You know, in Florida, I know it seems alien, but you wear a long sleeve shirt uh, when you're out uh, in the summertime because that sun will sunburn you. You know, you want to have a floppy hat that, that keeps your face and your skin covered. You know, so there, there are precautions. Uh, sunscreen, for example, you have to, to at least throw it on, although I'm not a big believer in it because I think it's kind of toxic. I just prefer to just wear clothing, you know, myself. That's just my opinion. Um, and, and of course, a lot of people don't like getting sweaty. You know, sometimes you might take two, three showers in a day here in Florida. You know, that's why it's important to have a, a shower that you can come home to and just pop in there and take a nice cold shower. So Florida is not for everybody. That's what I'm just telling you, even though it's free and, and it, it seems like, you know, the best place to be. And he was saying that Myrtle Beach is becoming more of a, a hub uh, for people that are retiring and that, that that's where they want to go in South Carolina. And I love Myrtle Beach. I mean, it's a very nice place. So anyway, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, that's it. Peace out. Stay free. And uh, we'll put this up. Watching the world burn January 2nd, 2023. <clears throat>